Okay, hey, how's it going? I haven't done one of these uh, Helix Tone creation videos in a little while, so I thought I'd I'd uh, do one. It's been a while, and um, I've been messing around with this kind of a tone. It's a uh, it's my my attempt at an Alan Holdsworth type clean and lead sound, and uh, Alan had a very distinctive lead sound. It was it was a uh, very warm and very smooth. He famously said he didn't like the sound of guitar. He really wanted to play the saxophone. So he tried to make his guitar sound uh, quite unlike a guitar uh, in a lot of ways. Um, but he had all. He also had this, had this super clean, spanky, uh, cl uh, clean sound that was great for the, the types of extended, you know, crazy, stretchy chords that he used to play. So uh, to make up this sound, what I've done is I've used the Roland Jazz Chorus, the, the Jazz Rivet amp model, but I'm using it with no cab for the clean sound. I've been doing this a, a bit now with some of my tones, and I really like the, 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 the cleanness of it, the spankiness of it. You get a little bit extra top end. Uh, it sounds very... It's kind of sterile sounding on its own, but when you put a couple of effects on it and some delay and reverb, it's a really cool sound. So I'll just I'll run you through the what's going on in, in the patch here. First in the chain I have is a compressor. I'm just using the deluxe comp. Uh, threshold is quite low, so it's it's compressing quite a lot. The attack is 12 milliseconds, so it's quite quick. And release is 130, so the release is relatively quick as well. And that's just to kind of really catch the... Uh, the fronts of chords and uh, just to kind of uh, and help me with leads as well because he he uh, he had such a soft touch on the guitar his uh, the compressor really helps the compressor helps you um, when you're when you're doing the kind of legato type stuff now I don't claim to be able to play like Alan Holsworth uh, I don't think anyone can play like Alan Holsworth really but um, it just helps a little bit with the with, with the smooth lead sound that he has which we'll come to in a little bit so like I said first is compressor then we go into the jazz chorus amp uh, all the controls are pretty up the middle drive at 5 bass is at 6 uh, mid treble presence all just in around 5 channel volume is at 8.5 and, and the master is at 8.5 and, and I'm running that into a studio compressor for the clean snapshot I just have two snapshots clean and lead so that's just again a little bit of tiny bit of a gain bump and a little bit of like further further uh, compression that then goes into a volume pedal which can be used for swells which I have on the floor um, then it goes down to B uh, not using the cab for the clean snapshot not using this EQ the next thing I have here is a, a dual pitch and I'm using this for micro pitch shift uh, so what we do is we pitch the dry signal up by a few cents one side or down by a few cents the other side and it gives us this chorus sound without being like a real wobbly chorus so uh, I'll turn it on now here so I'll just uh, this is what it sounds like without it and with Yeah, so you can hear. Oops, what's going on here? Uh, we're getting some delay happening somewhere. Yeah, so that's what the micro pitch does. It's just a very subtle kind of. It was a big thing in the '80s. All those rack '80s rack units. Like if you used a middle or a split coil, or it would be very, very kind of a rock man, Def Leppard type of a clean sound. And it kind of just widens the sound. Then I'm running it into the Trinity chorus, which is the tri-stereo chorus. So it's going to give it a little bit extra wobble. And yeah. I'm only, I'm trying to stick to using the bridge pickup because that's what Alan used. He didn't really... He didn't really use any uh, any other pickup settings. He uh, he only had one pickup on his guitar for the most part, so he used a bridge pickup. Okay, um, then we're running into this delay now. I'm using the multi-tap delay. He apparently was famous for using this eight-tap 
uh, delay unit. So I'm using the the multi tap six, and I've just I've actually just brought it up with the stock settings. Uh, I changed the the note sync to quarter note, so I can tap it to whatever tempo we're playing at. Um, low cut, I've brought it up a bit, just again so there's so many delays going on. I don't want it to get muddy, and I've brought the high cut down to seven point four kilohertz because again don't want it to be too bright. So that's what that sounds like. So all the all the different um, delay repeats are panned in different space. And it gives it this delayed delay but also almost a reverb effect because there's all the delays are going bap 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 bap. Um, I've brought the mix down quite a lot. The mix comes up at 50% if you hear it like at 50 we'll say. There's a lot going on there. But when you bring it right down, I had it at 20. And again, when you do your swells. It has this great, uh, yeah, almost like a reverb and a delay together. So that's what's, that's next in the chain. Then I'm running into this octave del uh, reverb, which is one of the legacy reverbs. It's the, uh, it gives an octave up along with the reverb. And I'm just... I'll knock off the delay for a sec. You can just hear it. Now I have it mixed quite low, but it is something you hear him use in later, later uh, recordings. It's just that that kind of particle, or not particle verb, but um, shimmer type reverb. So that added in with the delay. Yeah. So that's the. That's the the octave reverb, and then I have another a play, uh, the dynamic hall reverb as well, just for a kind of a uh, I'll let you hear what that sounds like on its own, just a general reverb, just a little bit of space afterwards. So when we've all those on together, and like I said, I can't play like Alan Holdsworth. kind of thing you get. So it's a, it's a nice, fun, clean sound to play, especially if you're playing those kind of big, stretchy, atmospheric chords that I can't really do, but... Uh, so that's the clean sound, right? We'll go to the the the, the overdrive, uh, the lead snapshot now. So in the lead snapshot, I've switched to a uh, Mesa Boogie Mark IV model. The the reverbs are now off, the delay is left on, and the the pitch and the modulation, the chorus are off. Um, we've engaged a precision drive just to kind of smooth out the uh, the guitar sound going into the amp, and then I have a Stock cab, greenback 25 with the ribbon mic because uh, it's kind of dark on it. It's pulled back five inches. You can mess around with that. Like It gets a little bit more midi uh, or middly uh, the closer you get to the speaker. I have the low and the high cuts off. I have a little bit of early reflections in. Um, and then I'll just turn off this EQ for a minute. So I'll just let you hear the amp. This is totally dry now. This is just the amp and the cab. <laughs> unremarkable um quite quite a dark amp sound even though uh so with the the amps settings are gain at six the two gains are six bass is low the mid is up high quite high which is not something i would normally do on this amp the treble is at seven six point nine seven presence is kind of in the middle but then i have the sort of reverse graphic eq setting that you'd normally have on a mesa, mesa amp so i have the mids boosted the 750 sliders up to almost 2 db the 2.2 .2 is uh, plus one. The 6600 uh, 6, is at zero. The 240 is pulled back a little bit and the 80 is pulled back. So it's quite a smooth kind of sound. Uh, 
um, which is again what he kind of goes for. Uh, you can hear it with the O drive off. <laughs> which you could use as well it's just the, uh, the overdrive kind of helps when you're doing the legato <laughs> kind of helps that um, then I have this EQ here now this this is just a smoothing thing It's not. I'm not doing anything in the low end uh, so I'll let you hear it again <laughs> That's what it off, and then just kind of uh, what it is doing. It has a low, uh, low cut at eighty, high cut at fourteen, her, uh, fourteen kilohertz, just to kill some of the very toppy, f top end fizz. I've got the mid frequency at four fifty pulled back two and a half dB, and I have the high gain pulled back at 5.9 kilohertz so it's just a tiny little fizz so if you uh that's with it on again and then with it off you can hear again what it you're gonna hear the the the, the top end uh the fizzy fizziness so that helps smooth that out and then we, and the only other thing on in, in the lead snapshot then is a delay. And, that, and, and again, we have the compressor on and that our overdrive to really just help. It's going to be effortless because it, it, the smoother and the, the less sort of aggressive you are with any you're picking. He, he, he was such a soft picker. It was almost all legato he did. So I can't play like Alan Holdsworth, but uh, we can we can certainly sound a little bit more like him uh, using the Helix. So that's the the Holdsworthy um, patch I have created. It'll be in the description. It'll be up on Custom Tone if you want to download it and have a play around with it yourself. And hopefully you enjoy playing with it. And uh, if you did enjoy the video, please like, subscribe. And um, yeah, I'll be back again with another one pretty soon. And uh, until then, see ya.